Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the second part of the building series where we will be focusing on building the camp. First things first, I wanted to show you guys all the parts that came in today. These are the parts that I will mostly be using for the tent design that I came up with. You can see based on the colors of the pieces that I will be making the tents with a combination of blue, red, yellow, and white. Now before we build a tent, I wanted to show you guys the parts that you will need in order to build one of these tents. Alright guys, so I have laid out all of the pieces that you will need to construct one of these tents on the table right here. First up we have 7 of these 1x2 modified plates, 15 of these 1x1 clips in brown. Then we have these pieces right here that will make up the central support of the whole tent. Then we have 9 1x6 tiles in white and 12 in red. Then we have 4 1x4 wedge pieces for both sides in both red and white. 14 1x2 jumper plates, 6 1x3 plates, 7 1x2 plates, 1 1x1 plate. These pieces will make up the very top of the tent and that round brown piece will hold everything together. And lastly here we have some pieces that will be representing the folded side of the tent. That's it for the part list, now let's get into the building. Alright guys, so this is the tent design right here and trust me I've experimented with so many different pieces to try and make up the cone shape of the tent and nothing quite closed the gaps in between the pieces as well as this design. You can see how it not only looks good from the outside but it also has a realistic look on the inside with all the brown pieces making it look like a wooden frame. I'm overall proud of how this tent has turned out but now let's build the other ones. Alright, so this will be the positioning of the three tents. I think if I build any more, it will look way too crowded. I'll also have to remove this patch of olive green grass because that is where a campfire would look the best. But now I want to direct your attention towards the front of the mock where you can see that something is missing. Well, there are a lot of things missing, but our English camp is vulnerable to a possible cavalry charge, which is obviously not what we want, so let's build some anti-cavalry stakes and dig them into the hillside. I think I've come up with a pretty interesting and unique design and the pieces you'll need to build these stakes are these brown attachment pieces, these 1x1 clips, some wooden bars and a lot of these brown cylinder pieces. Now for the tip or the sharpened part of the stake, I think these cone pieces in dark tan would look the best. But those are all the pieces that you will need, now let's get into the build.
So the stakes are all set up now and here you can see I did some work off camera and removed the olive green patch that I showed you guys earlier and replaced it with this dug in fire pit. The campfire design was tough to come up with because it would be hard to make it the right size, but this is the design I came up with. You can see I basically clipped these one by one pieces onto the base to represent rocks and utilize these brown elements to represent sticks and firewood. Now let's place the campfire into the fire pit. Now obviously the soldiers would need to feed themselves so I made this cooking pot build which I think looks quite nice. You can see how I built it here, it's a pretty simple design that does the job. I'll get these orange studs and place them into the pot to represent some kind of stew that they would be cooking. I'll place the cooking pot over the fire like so. Here we have a full barrel of red sausages that has been opened and two more barrels of food for the future as well as a sack. Next up I also made this table that I built using a bunch of 1x1 tiles in both red and yellow as a table cover. I also made this little drink station where they would have a keg of fine ale for their consumption. I used these 1x6 brown tiles in conjunction with some 1x2 jumper plates to act like benches, which I will place on either side of the table. Oh and just in case it rains, I built this roof in red and yellow and have hinged the center to give it a better look. And to hold it up, I'll be using these brown hose pieces in order to hold the roof up at a slight angle. Now sanitization is also important in the camp. The last thing we would want is for our soldiers to catch some kind of a disease. So I filled this wooden tub with one by one clear studs representing water so that they will be able to wash themselves or any equipment that they would have more easily. And beside it, I will place some extra firewood logs for the campfire. And of course, they'll need a barrel just to store their weapons in a place where it is easily accessible in the case of unexpected combat. And that is it for all the camp components of the mock. I'm pretty sure that I built most of the essentials for a medieval camp. Now you might say that there are still many things missing, but with the limited space that I have on the base plate, there's only so much that I can include before it starts to look too crowded. That being said, however, I would love to make a large scale medieval army camp mock, which includes everything you can possibly think of when it comes to a medieval camp. I certainly have enough parts to make that happen, and I can make many more tents if I wanted to, in different color variations. Now let's place the minifigs onto the mock and make the whole camp look lived in. With all the minifigs now placed onto the mock, it looks amazing. You can see I have an archer here as a lookout to make sure that he sounds the alarm if he sees anything suspicious. We have the same English knight with his foot soldiers from the last video who have gathered around the campfire in preparation for some hot stew for lunch. And we have this foot soldier sitting by the table enjoying some ale all by himself. You can see that everyone is pretty much relaxed, unarmed and have their shields scattered all around. And that is how it was most of the time during long term sieges where their main strategy is to starve out the enemy or in this case bombard the enemy with the trebuchet until they give in. And of course we have stakes set up all around to ensure that the enemy doesn't decide to charge out with their cavalry and try to destroy the camp. Overall, I think this episode highlighted some cool builds that I managed to come up with. Specifically, I'm curious to see what you guys think of the tent designs. I think they look great and they are actually pretty functional too. I mean, you can comfortably fit two or three minifigs in the tent with this design, which is ideal. But anyway, the English soldiers will have to spend some time to try and figure out how they're going to go about the construction of the trebuchet. But in the meantime, that's all I've got for today. Subscribe so you don't miss out on the next episode. I assure you it will be very exciting. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.